Hi, I'm Darren. I'm a senior applications engineer here at Go Engineer. I have a lot of customers here in the Midwest, and many of them have a common process where they do build outs that consist of cabinetry, and it's usually produced by using plank or plywood. Now, over the last couple of years, we've come up with a neat little process that uses really simple features in SolidWorks basic extrudes, the shell feature, and one of my favorite tools, the split feature. And in the end, you get the same type of cut list you would from any other type of weldment type of process. Let me show you what we came up with. We're just gonna start off with some real simple geometry. So just a basic rectangle in the front plane will do. Now any dimensional work, or for this example, we're just gonna go with 20 by 18. And we'll just do 24 inches deep. Okay. So I'm going to use the shell to illustrate this, and we'll go ahead and actually remove the top face. This will also ultimately become our wall thickness. I'm going to use one of my favorite features here called the split. By selecting a face of the part, it will extend that face infinitely and use that to split the part up. In this case, we end up with a completely separate panel on the front. And just for a little bit of an effect here, we're going to go ahead and set our part properties to maple. Okay, so we'll just repeat this. Now we're going to take the two side faces and use their inside face to extend. All we do is pick the bodies we want to keep as a result of this feature and say OK. This will leave us now with three individual panels. Now we're going to overlap the grain on the back face, so I want the bottom to actually extend. In this case, we want both parts to be picked because that will result in this last feature. Alright, now some designs we have an opening in the front. Now this could be for a drawer, this could be for glass. Here we're just going to make a simple sketch where we offset the entities from the edge, create a three inch reveal. Last thing we'll do is make a split. Now with this one here, we're gonna use just basic overlap. So here by picking inside faces, we're gonna end up with long pieces on the top and short vertical pieces. We'll pick all four pieces as a result and say, okay. Now fronts don't always overlap this way. Sometimes there's a 45 degree bevel. We can use a sketch to split our parts exactly the same way. So by drawing simple lines connecting to the corners, we're going to be able to use this to split this into four separate bodies. Choose split, and again pick the bodies that you want to keep as a result of the feature. Now much like assemblies, multi-body parts can do explodes as well. Here we just right click on the name of the configuration and add the new exploded view. Pick the body you want and simply pick and drag. You want more than one? Just pick them. It's pretty much repetitive from this point. Okay, let's hide that sketch. Everything looks good. The way we're going to track the body sizes is by using the weldment functionality. By simply clicking the weldment feature, it changes the solid bodies folder to a cut list and it groups all of the like bodies together. Now you notice the properties are pretty bare bones at this point, but we have a magic feature here. Right click the name of the cut list and select create bounding box. It will automatically create the best fit and these values are associative so when you change the geometry, they update. For parts like plates and plywood, those three dimensions are really all we need. Okay, so now we need a 2D drawing. Let's go ahead and take this part, throw it over on a C size sheet. And just to fast track it, let's grab the explode view off the view palette. Now this isn't quite the way I want it. We have this nice little view tool up here in your heads up toolbar where you can do some fine tuning on your isometric views. I bet you didn't know we could do that. All right, let's add a bill of materials. Now this is one common mistake a lot of people using this technique do. Remember, bill of materials is for an assembly. This is a single part with multi bodies. So here, if we try to balloon it, we're only going to get an individual balloon. Instead, what we want to do is a weldment cut list. That gives us individual quantity count and a description for each of those bodies. Now trying to balloon now, the weldment is being controlled by that bill of materials. But if we delete the BOM, auto ballooning takes over and gives us the individual body balloons.
Okay, so a little fine tuning here. Let's set our units to English. We see our half inch wall thickness as a result of that shell. So now let's go back to the part and change the wall thickness. Shells can have multi-thickness settings, so by picking a different face and giving it a different thickness, we can change the front to 3 quarters of an inch where the rest remains a half inch. And of course, everything in SOLIDWORKS is associative, so when you go back to the drawing, that weldment cut list is absolutely perfect. So as you can see, the technique uses pretty simple features within SOLIDWORKS and is really more repetitive than anything else. So for more tips and tricks like this, make sure to follow us on YouTube and visit us at GoEngineer.com. If you want to be notified when new videos like this go up, make sure you hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Darren at GoEngineer. See you next time.